welcome everyone to the August 2018 community meeting of the I2B2 Transmart Foundation. My name is Rudy Ponzo and I will uh, moderate the session. The meeting, this session will be recorded and the recording and the slide deck will be posted to our website and also to our YouTube channel. The agenda today you can see here, we're going to go through, uh, welcome by Diane Keogh, our executive director, uh, a few updates uh, of some of the foundation's activities, uh, and then uh, conclude with a uh, report from the ontology working group. So let's get started with uh, Diane. Okay, Diane, there you go. Did you say something, Rudy? Yeah, go ahead. You're on. Okay. Um, so I uh, August is flying by as um, as it always does every year, and um, I hope uh, it would, hope everybody had a great um, summer and ready for uh, September um, coming soon. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick update um, on a few things. Um, Rudy, why don't you jump to the next slide? At the uh, June meeting, um, Zach Lohani kicked off uh, a new sponsorship program um, for us called the Contributing Sponsors Program. Um, and this is really um, focused on providing um, some support for uh, operational support for the foundation. Um, so a few of the, the benefits of the sponsorship um, We'll be providing two free tickets to the foundation events. Um, in the past, our uh, events have all been free, um, but we're going to have to charge a, a small amount um, for the, the upcoming events just to, to cover for the, the venue and, and uh, lunch and that sort of thing. So we'll provide two free tickets. Um, we'll provide quarterly updates on our development roadmap and early access uh, and demonstrations for some of the, the new development um, that's happening. happening. So you'll have a these, these folks will have a, a closer, better idea of what's coming up, um, access to high priority JIRA tickets. Um, and then we'll also um, be sure to really recognize the contributing members, you know, on our website with, uh, you know, information about your organization. Um, you know, we'll mention you in emails and, um, you know, in our e-blasts and, and certainly acknowledgement um, during our um, events and monthly calls. Um, so what is it? What does it support? It supports the basic operations of the foundation. Um, so providing the monthly calls, getting everybody together, um, the, the monthly training programs, uh, making sure that we we continue to provide different types of training um, and make those available to you. Um, you know, all of the monthly calls and the trainings and all of our uh, events are all recorded and made available on the website. So that type of support is there. Um, we provide operational support for the project management committee. So these are the committees that actually do the development of the platforms. You know, maintaining the website and um, and, and supporting the um, the uh, the events. So that's the type of support. So um, Rudy, if you go to the next slide, we will unveil the folks who have um, contributed so far. Um, so we have um, we have four. Uh, academic um, organizations and um, for industry. So uh, DBMI at Harvard Medical School, um, Partners Healthcare, uh, University of Michigan, and the University of Kansas are all um, contributors uh, from the academic side. Uh, from industry, we have um, the Hive, um, uh, uh, Prognosis Data, uh, ITTM, and, um, and Inner Systems. Um, all came in. So, you know, thank, thanks to these um, these folks who have uh, joined as um, early uh, contributors. So next slide. So we have um, we we have these working group sessions, and we talk about them a lot in this uh, meeting because I think these are these are groups that have uh, formed uh, by different uh, uh, members of the community. To really focus on very specific things. So, you know, we have the user interface, um, ontologies. Jim Campbell will give an update on what's happening on the ontologies working group today. ETL um, training. Um, most of these these groups are really trying to 
um, pull together, you know, low-hanging fruit and things that um, will will support um, organizations as they implement and, and use uh, our platforms. So some real practical good things I think are coming out of these groups. So what I'd like to do, and one of the groups that we talked about early on but we never really formed, is um, a group to pull together use cases. Um, and I really believe this is low-hanging fruit because there's a lot of organizations out there that are doing some unbelievable things with these platforms um, and have you know, information about how um, it, it's really made a difference. And you know, what we want to do is pull together these use cases in a way where people can really you know, understand the, um, the power of, of the platforms that we support. It also provides uh, recognition for these organizations that have done you know, great things um, using these tools. So we have some initial members that had signed up a while ago, um, Deb Batson, Lisa Bedford, and Peter Rice. Um, I've, I've spoken to, to Deb and Peter recently and they're, uh, they're, they're ready to move on this. So I, I really would love you know, everybody on the call and we'll certainly send out emails for um, folks to, to join this, um, this use case work group. Um, so, Rudy, next slide. I think you're up next. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Diane. Um, I'll just talk briefly about the fall user meeting uh, at, in Geneva. Uh, this has been uh, put together by the European Academic User Group of I2B2. Uh, and we've been joining with them to help put together a, a combined program. Uh, the meeting is scheduled for October 31st, November 1st um, in Geneva on a lovely uh, campus, the Campus Biotech. And um, I think that it really you know, has the potential of being a, a wonderful meeting. Registrations are open. We have about 90 people registered. Uh, we can fit as much as 300. So uh, there's plenty of space. Uh, we would love to have you register soon. Uh, if you're interested in this meeting because uh, to help us with the planning uh, the as I say the the venue is, is lovely in Geneva and um, we're uh, we're trying to close off the registration uh, mid-september so that we can uh, plan and get everything organized uh, several topics uh, of interest are going to be covered by the program uh, and uh, listed here and we have speakers all lined up uh, in all these categories uh, the keynote speakers are set. Uh, I think we have a, a good group uh, who uh, will be presenting some very interesting talks for everyone. And um, I think that it should be uh, quite a good. Um, one of the highlights will be on the first evening uh, a dinner on uh, this boat where we'll have a chance to go out to sea and have dinner. Um, it will be this will be a copay dinner, so you'll be asked to, to pay a portion of the, the dinner um, if you decide to join us. Uh, and uh, Zach, Zach Kahani tells us that this is the very boat that he traveled on when he was uh, going to high school in Switzerland. Uh, so we'll have to talk to Zach about um, if that uh, that's uh, possible. Um, the scientific group that's been meeting and going through all the talks and everything. And as I say, we've got now a full agenda uh, in terms of the talks that we have and the, uh, the schedule will be published shortly of the exact times, um, but these, these will all be laid out there. And I will also mention that um, we will be presenting from the foundation uh, roadmap uh, for uh, our products on the first day in the morning. Uh, there will be a talk by uh, Jason Stedman from the Harvard group, uh, Paul VX group, uh, talking about the I2B2 Transmart on the afternoon of the second day. Uh, in the uh, We will have uh, some open discussion on the platform and where we are going, uh, you know, and have really discussion in terms of what we should be um, should be doing. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I see I got a note from Gil Oman that he, he have actually also, also been on this boat. Uh, so, uh, so please um, register soon. Uh, we really need to know how many people are going to be coming and um, it's very important for us. So thanks, thanks for doing that. I'd also like to talk just briefly about uh, our platform news. Um, we've, we've started to, to put together a roadmap to help everyone see you know, where things are going. Uh, we've put together a page on the website to show um, 
what the current release of each platform is so that you have a chance to, to take a look at, um, you know, see what's out there. Uh, and on the website, there's appropriate links to find out more information uh, to the GitHub repos and um, release notes, et cetera, things like that. And then starting to look ahead at what's coming next. Uh, so today, I2B2 is 1.7.10 release that just came out uh, a few weeks ago. We've just released from Transmart 16.3, which is a, a, a release that includes Postgres and Oracle and quite a few more databases, about 100 new da public data sets got added. Uh, the 17.1 server release has also uh, been, has been officially released now. Uh, and the I2B2 Transmart program uh, is now in preview. Uh, it is downloadable and can be loaded on your personal machine. Um, and uh, they're working hard to get to the first production release late September, early October. And uh, again, in, in Geneva, we'll learn a lot more about that. Um, we will continue to, to pull this together and update it. We're working to make all of the PMC notes uh, available from the different PMC meetings. And uh, we're hoping that, um, you know, this will all be uh, useful for everyone you know both where we are going and, and understand you know what the how the PMCs are operating and, and working through these things um, hopefully a highlight of the Geneva meeting will be that afternoon session where we'll start to talk about what uh, what the different future um, uh, directions could be for the platforms and, and get some you know get some good discussion in terms of you know where we want to go so now we'll move on to our actual um, Topic for today, which is the ontology working group giving us a report. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Jim Campbell, who's going to be speaking. And um, Jim, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Hear you fine. And then um, is it Christian Nell? Is that who? I'm looking for the other speaker. Uh, no, I noticed that Jeff has signed on. Um, have okay. you, uh, I don't see him on the list yet. Um, he was there a minute ago. Okay. Oh, Jeff. What's his last name? Oh, Clan. Jeff Clan. K L A N. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. Got it. All right. I will unmute him in a second. First slide, please. Can I advance the slides, Rui, or do you have to? I think I'm going to have to do it. There you go. And Jeff, Good you morning, should be everybody. In. There you go. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jim Campbell. I'm a physician at the University of Nebraska and a manager for our PCORI Data Mart, where we support both the uh, common data model um, and I2B2 Shrine. Next slide. Um, we had our first ontology workgroup meeting back in, back, I think we're hearing the younger clan there, right, Jeff? Is my name on there? No, I'm not a workgroup member. That's okay. Anyway, uh, we had our first, we had our first meeting in January. Yes. We had our first meeting in January, and I'd like to acknowledge. Can I get your your diaper and your short your pants on ready? One, two, three. I'm gonna mute Jeff for now. I'll put him, bring him back. Okay, that's a good idea. I'd like to acknowledge um, that we've had a group of great people um, working and volunteering their time on this on our monthly telecoms. Um, I've listed them here, and they basically represent. Um, I2B2 uh, Transmart users um, across the US and Canada, Puerto Rico, and um, even in the Netherlands. Next slide. Um, those of you who are not familiar with uh, some of the technical details of I2B2, you may say, what is an ontology? And I think it's fair to say that if we talk to a mathematician or a philosopher, they would not recognize what we're doing as ontology work. Um, what we're talking about actually is metadata for I2B2, which helps to organize a view of the database and supports query by concept um, uh, using the I2B2 query client. 
It also supports aggregate, by that I mean folder searching, where you can grab a set of diagnoses using the hierarchical structures that are deployed um, into the I2B2 metadata. Um, one brief comment about technical details, concept code and modifier code in the I2B2 uh, data model for observation fact basically formulate or, or create the possibility of a type of information model which can organize your queries of your database. Next slide. For example, here you see the I2B2 client with an ontology deployed um, for ICD-10-CM. Um, you can see that it's something of a hierarchical structure. Um, and if you're interested in retrieving cases where the encounter diagnosis is tuberculosis of lung, you see the code down there, A15.0. You drag that folder over to the right, and basically you will find all of the instances in your database of that um, particular diagnosis. However, if you're interested in a broader question and actually want to look for, let's say, all cases of tuberculosis of any type, you can see a little bit higher up there, A15 to A19, that's a folder which is basically um, a um, pointer to all of the cases in the database where um, tuberculosis was the uh, uh, cause of the disease. You drag that folder across and you get all of your tuberculosis of the lung, but also all of those other types of tuberculosis uh, that you see down below. Next slide. So when we first met in January, um, our um, charge was given to us by the foundation. And uh, what we were um, requested to do was to try and reduce the difficulty in managing ontologies because I'll tell you, uh, speaking from personal experience, that there's a lot of work involved in getting this information together and also coding your database with, um, with uh, structured coded events. Um, and so the first question was, how can we help um, our community of users to manage that work? Secondly, we needed to identify and decide on the standards that we were going to support. Um, and um, in terms of interoperability, you know, uh, that's a pretty important issue if we actually want to try and share queries across the network in something like um, a shrine, a shrine uh, network. Um, we also wanted to develop a consolidated list of ontologies and decided what were the priorities for focus. And um, we uh, expected to make this repository of ontologies available to the community, basically to save them work. Next slide. So we started off with a survey of all of our members um, who uh, were actually managing um, I2B2 uh, nodes and asked them for what ontologies, what code systems must we have, what are those we should have, and what are those that would be nice to have. And not surprisingly, um, the terminologies that are supported for interoperability the Office of the National Coordinator for Health IT were a big part of what were identified as must-have. Uh, diagnoses, ICD-10-CM and 9-CM. Procedures, ICD-10-PCS, PICPICS, and CPT-4. For medications, um, specifically orderable meds in the U.S., Rx norm was chosen, and there was a minority group that thought that we should have order details as well, such as route and, um, and dose coding and things like that. Laboratory um, was a big item, um, and so LOINC codes, um, specifically lab LOINC, were considered to be a must-have solution. Um, with clinical LOINC, that is vital signs, blood pressure, uh, BMI, and so forth, following up as a should have item. SNOMED CT was identified for conditions, that is problem list data. 
and secondarily for procedures. And uh, although there weren't many nodes that had actually deployed it, um, some of us recognized the fact that um, national drug codes, uh, which in the U.S. are mandated for dispensing and um, administration medication events, um, should also be included mapped to Rx norm. Next slide. Some of the nice to have uh, metadata that came up for discussion was the sequence on ontology that is published by Harvard, ICD-03, which is a cancer coding system from the World Health Organization, NACR codes, which are uh, cancer registry data uh, that are supported by the Center for Disease Control, uh, value sets, that is the answers, if you will, um, to uh, questions such as, um, you know, how did you, uh, how did you feel today when you came to clinic? Um, those value set codes that are published by Office of the National Coordinator were mentioned. Immunization codes, the University of Texas Southwestern offered to share their ontology of organisms, and um, also mentioned was the common data model of PCORI visit details. Next slide. Um, uh, we also discussed what were some of the operational requirements we would like to support um, in any repository that we published for the community. Um, first of all, it should be well documented, and the data sets, that is the artifacts that are used to install the metadata at the client site, uh, should be um, um, well described. There should be maintenance releases, um, preferably preferably with versioning, uh, because we recognize that none of these coding systems are static with the exception of ICD-9-CM. And so um, how uh, those, uh, e with each release, those code systems may deactivate or, inact or activate new codes. And um, in the process, of course, that means that we may be left with legacy codes in our databases um, that we still need to access. Um, the metadata should be forward compatible if possible so that queries can interoperate um, in moving forward in time. There should be an infrastructure for getting this out to the community of users, and there should be a business model, um, which um, I think it's fair to say we really haven't come up with yet um, for how we maintain this over time. Now, those of you who may not know what metadata XML is, it's basically a feature of I2 meta, I2B2 metadata that allows you to query by value. Um, it defines the units and the range of normals and that type of thing. Um, and it also is part of the metadata structure. Next slide. Um, we have several offers of support in terms of how to move forward. Uh, the Hive offered consulting and testing functions. University of Texas Southwestern offered to contribute their ontologies. Um, here at Nebraska, we are publishing um, metadata called Snow Shrine, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Uh, North Carolina and Harvard both offered manpower and tooling. Next slide. For the next several months, we basically grappled with the issue of how we would operationalize this. And in June, we discussed an operational proposal for support of a repository with the core ontologies supported by metadata. And the work group basically rejected that, that um, plan because it was going to require too many resources. Um, and there were also some who objected to the notion um, of a standardization. Um, the majority basically favored moving forward with an enhanced wiki um, with links to metadata supported by interested parties. Uh, for those of you who were at the Boston meeting, uh, you may be aware of the discussion that occurred um, in our uh, end of the day uh, um, open mic, um, where a standard set of ontologies, that is metadata for I2B2, was proposed, but um, was basically not accepted by leadership. 
Next slide. So I do want to uh, make you aware of resources that are available to the I2B2 community, I2B2 Transmart community today, where some or all of those operational features that I mentioned um, are being supported. And uh, certainly the individual who has been at this the longest um, is Jeff Klan, um, who supports Arch. And uh, can you please unmute Jeff and um, have him tell us a little bit about Arch functionality and what he can offer. I think Jeff went offline. Yeah, well, he's, he's, he's not on here now. All right, well, we'll, we'll hope he comes back on. Um, I'll, I'll let you know if he does. So, very good. Um, the second uh, resource that I, and, and um, I do have the uh, reference uh, URLs here um, for the um, Arch source code, which also includes um, not just the metadata, but support for uh, their Shrine network. Um, and there's a lot more that Jeff could tell you about that. I'm hoping he returns. Um, the second um, resource that I wanted to mention was ACT, Accrual to Clinical Trials. That's maintained by Michelle Morris on behalf of um, the translational research, uh, network of translational research sites. Um, I've included the URL for um, their source code uh, there on the slide. And Michelle apologizes that she could not be here today, um, but um, did send me a summary um, in that um, ACT is supporting documentation and they have a training webinar in terms of how to use uh, their ontologies. They are currently supporting demographics, um, ICD-9 and ICD-10 CM diagnoses, um, 9 CM procedures, about 300 laboratories, um, most medications, and visit details. But ACT is about to publish um, a new ontology that will be out in Q1 of 2019. And in that expanded version, they will have demographics, all US laboratories, uh, medications um, indexed by the VA classification and alphabetically by ingredient, uh, diagnoses, procedures, and visit details. So a lot more to come there from ACT. Um, they do use JIRA um, to support bugs and also have a national coordinator, Elena, which basic uh, project manager, I, I should say, um, who basically triages issue, uh, issues with the ACT ontology. So, uh, Rudy, by any chance, do we have Jeff back? I'm sorry, I don't see him on the list. He's not. Um, you know, most of you, uh, those of you who have been involved with this for a period of time know that Jeff supported the um, skills uh, metadata, um, which was the name of their first network. Um, uh, they recently uh, changed the name to ARCH, Accessible Research Commons for Health, um, and are supporting um, I2B2 metadata, their Shrine network topology, um, and um, also they have maps um, to the PCORI common data model um, and to OMOP, which allows for translations of their um, metadata structures to uh, to support those other data models. Um, I'll hope Jeff comes on in a second and can talk a little bit more about that. Um, at the also, University of Nebraska, we part I just wanted to mention that um, we've got a report, Nick reports that the Snow Shrine link does not work. So I don't know if there's something wrong in the link or not, but. Thank you for that. I will check into it at the end of the call. Um, so um, the third resource that I want to mention um, is one that uh, we're 
that uh, we at Nebraska are publishing for um, our uh, Shrine Network within uh, GPC, Greater Plans Collaborative. Um, and I contacted um, Jeff and uh, 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 about 18 months ago with an interest in trying to harmonize uh, metadata, but recognizing that there were some uh, you know, concerns that we had in terms of limitations of the metadata that at that time was skills 3.1b. Next slide. Um, one of the things we noticed was that only about 60% of our orderable meds um, that we had in our database at uh, Nebraska were visible with uh, skills 3.1b. Um, and we have worked with Jeff and with the National Library of Medicine um, to deploy um, a standard set of tools that will um, extract from NLM via their API at RxNav um, a complete list, a complete and historically um, accurate list of medications, Rx norm codes. Um, that uh, basically covers all the meds that have been in the use in the uh, U.S. pharmacopoeia. Uh, we also, um, extracting from NLM, um, have maps to uh, national drug codes. We've deployed that in Snow Shrine, and Jeff, I know, is interested in it. Um, I'm not sure whether they have done anything with it yet. I know Michelle Morris um, is suggesting that that will be um, a feature of what they deploy in ACT um, in Q1 of next year, um, we will be publishing our standard set of tools for um, extracting these Rx norm and NDC codes um, on our ontology wiki as well as on our uh, publishing site back in Nebraska. The second issue that I brought up with Jeff was that they only had a couple of dozen lab codes Michelle tells me that they have deployed 300 um, and uh, ACT, and um, we have set up tooling to basically extract all of the um, lab codes, lab link codes, um, into ontol uh, met ontology data, metadata for um, I2B2, um, and we've got that deployed in Snow Shrine, and Jeff tells me that in their latest version of Arch, uh, they've rolled out that expanded laboratory as well so that lab codes um, that are reported by our laboratories will basically be visible in our I2B2 metadata. We've been having some discussion as a work group with the AMA to try and uh, validate our publishing plans for CPT4, um, given that, uh, you know, that's been a, um, a legal, medical legal issue that has confounded things for a bit. Um, we haven't really made any, prog we don't have any progress to report on that yet. Uh, Rudy, do you uh, have any Jeff. sighting on Jeff? Yes, he, he's now here. Let me uh, unmute him. Jeff, are you there? Hello, Jeff. Hello? Hi, Jeff, you're, you're our live. Oh, you knew, you knew it was me. Okay, cool. Hello, all. So I'm at home on vacation this week, so I am going to be a little scatterbrained. Um, but Jim asked me to chat with you about the Arch ontology. And I have not been on the entire call, so I don't really know what he's told you already, except I did hear that um, he, he was mentioning we've just rolled out some of his laboratory work in our latest ontology release. So uh, the um, Arch ontology, um, Sean asked me to put together in 2013-2014 as a um, ontology to support the uh, PCORnet networks. We had developed an ontology that exactly represents the um, data in the PCORnet data model. And um, it also kind of became a reference implementation for developing a comprehensive uh, ontology. Uh, in I2B2, and it's been used as kind of the jump start for a number of other projects. I know that ACT started with the um, Arch ontology when they when they uh, kicked off, and have expanded in, <clears throat> into an ACT-like direction since then. And several other PCORnet networks are using 
our ontology and it I think I think Epic even used our ontology as a kickstart for some of the tools that they built. So, it's uh, you know it's it's just it's more of a reference uh, implementation of a uh, use of a comprehensive use of the I2V2 ontology data model that um, has inspired some other more advanced things since then. But it's also the ontology that we're using in the Picornet uh, network here we have at Harvard Arch and. Um, and we also have a data transform that transforms um, data mapped to that data model directly into the Picornet data model. And we're we're updating that to transform the data into OMOP as well. And you'll probably see an OMOP version of the Arch ontology, but right now we're we're using the single ontology to transform both to Picornet and OMOP. The um the on, we have a GitHub page, it's GitHub slash arch commons, and there's an Arch Ontology repository. It tells you all about it. It's got, uh, I can run through what it's got. It's got um, some standard demographics measures. It's got um, diagnosis codes, ICD-9, ICD-10, um, procedure codes in ICD-9, ICD-10, uh, CMS DRG and MS DRG, and also a version of PicPix that's a bit outdated at this point. Um, an encounters table that was defined by PCORI, and we just implemented it. Um, a vital signs, again, just simple stuff like weight, blood pressure, smoking status, and height. Jim actually took the time to map those elements to LOINC, but in general, it's not like a very deep or exciting vitals tree. And then we have labs. We have now, we have the snow lab LOINC tree. And medications, we have RxNorm codes organized by um, NDFRT, which is the VA drug class system. So all of that is freely available for downloading from our GitHub site. We uh, offer a lot of support to our sites to get their data mapped uh, to, to those not in our network. We also have pretty good documentation on how to map data into the ontology. And, um, and we're also always happy to hear from people who have questions or uh, have ideas of what to do with it. But that's, uh, that's um, about all I have to say, I think. And, and um, I guess I'll turn it back to Jim because Michelle, I think, couldn't be on today. Jeff, thanks for taking time out from your vacation to talk to us. Sure. And unfortunately, Michelle can't make it today, um, so I have uh, summarized what she sent me. Um, can we have the next slide, please? Uh, and the next slide. So as I mentioned um, a little bit ago, uh, right now the uh, work group is focusing primarily on developing and enhancing the wiki page um, so that we can provide a central shopping mark for um, ontology resources. And um, at this point in time, we're planning an ontology basics, ontology use cases, um, links for our ontologies for federated networks, including Arch, for example, um, and ontology tools where we'll be publishing um, standard extracts for um, these various code systems that uh, can be used by um, our, our community of developers, you know, who want to build their own their own sites from scratch. Um, and that's really what I've organized for today. So, Rudy, um, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Okay. Well, let's um, thank you very much, Jim, and thank you, Jeff. Uh, we can first of all let's take any questions on this ontology working group and the presentation we just heard if um, you have a question you can type it in the question window or you could raise your hand or you could type it into the chat window i'm, I'm watching all three of those uh, so if anybody has any questions uh jim there's a request for your email address so we can get that posted Will do. That's um, Campbell, C A M P B E L L, at unmc.edu. Okay. I'll uh, send that to everybody in the uh, question window. Also, the question uh, Keith Ellison is asking uh, can you elaborate a little bit on ontologies for federated networks? Um, Bob from North Carolina is going to be leading that, that effort. 
Um, and um, if you drop me an email, um, I'll be glad to hook you up with him. Um, and uh, and um, if you're interested in participating in that uh, that uh, that work group, that'd be great. Okay. And any other questions? We can we have some time yet. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Jim. Um, we can open up to questions about anything. Uh, Diane, I believe, is still here, and we can take any questions, foundation, platforms, whatever. And I'm sorry not to. I'm sorry, my memory is faulty, but it, it's Robert Bradford at North Carolina who's who's sharing ah, okay. the. Um, the Federated Network um, print group. Okay. Uh, Ward of uh, Weistra from um, The Hive has reminded me that there will be a glowing bear luncheon in Geneva on the second day, a working group, discussion group. Um, and I, I believe. Okay, any other questions about anything? Okay, you don't see anything. Um, Diane, would you like to say any closing remarks? Uh, just thanks to everyone. Um, I'm gonna, one more, one more uh, toy for the new uh, case um, study working group. Um, if you uh, would like to join, you know, you can um, can sign up for the working group on our website or certainly just email me directly. Um, I think that, that this is going to be really important and we're going to pull together a lot of really great um, materials. So, um, so please sign up if you're interested. Okay. Well, I don't see anything else. So um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this recording will be posted uh, in, a, in another day or two. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.